What a difference a week makes, huh? Five inches of snow, gone. Hallelujah. Dan and Sue Brockman back. Hallelujah. Welcome. Doc Moorhead, too. It's fun to, to see all of our winter snowbirds coming back. Good news to announce. Samuel David Kessler was born in Istanbul, Turkey. We celebrate with Ron and Sue and Mike and Aaron and Marty, the advent of this little boy. But there's a lot more good news to come today, so hold on. Let me just call your attention to um, the announcements in the bulletin. If you could look at the cover, inside bulletin cover with me, please. First of all, if, if you are visiting with family today or you're just here because you were looking for a place to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in worship, we welcome you. And we're so glad you're here to declare the good news of our risen Savior with us. As we look at our announcements, uh, please note today that there is a delicious Easter brunch that has been prepared uh, by Fellowship and Outreach. And so you're invited to come down and let's welcome our community in for um, a good meal in the loving community of Jesus Christ way. Also note that one great hour of sharing, we've been collecting that special offering of the Presbyterian Church. Uh, you can, can still get your offering for that special offering in today if you like. Easter egg hunt is coming. I'm sure the kids are excitedly anticipating that. And um, today you may know that uh, is the last day before I go on sabbatical and some of you asked what will you be doing and how can we be praying for you and I appreciate that question and so for for you all you who are interested I have produced this there at the back table here and the table behind me in the hallway show you or tell you what I'm going to be doing from way, chapter to chapter of my sabbatical and simple ways that uh, you could pray for me I greatly appreciate those prayers and I'm going to be praying for you, even as I miss you terribly, but I will look forward to our reunion. Uh, and if you see me around town, you don't need to try and not talk to me, okay? I, in fact, I'd love to talk to you, <laughs> just to hear how your life is going. But have fun. Enjoy Jenny and one another. And may you rest and renew and follow Jesus. In just a moment, the bell choir is going to lead us with a, a beautiful musical meditation. And as best we can, I know we've got some excited kids, uh, if we could just give them full attention while they lead us into worship. But first, friends, Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. He is risen. Amen. Let's worship the risen Savior, Jesus.
Good morning. Let us stand and share in the call to worship. And let us enter and discover this resurrection story by reading Mark's account. And note there's a part for men and a part just for women. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, mother, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. What glorious news for the world today. Christ the Lord is risen from the grave. Let us join in hymn number 234.
Amen. Please be seated. And it is because of Jesus Christ, the risen one, that we have confidence to know that we can go to our God and lay it all before him. His mercy and his grace is abundant for us, more abundant than we know. Let us confess our need for this Savior, Jesus. Let us confess our sin to God, and may we be healed. Will you please join me in our morning prayer of confession? Almighty God, you raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people. Help us to obey the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead and sits on the throne of God in heaven to reign forever and ever. In the mercy and the goodness of Jesus Christ, the Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you please? Revelation declares. Oh, that's okay. Actually, you know what? You're going to say what I was going to say anyway. This is the good news. Let's sing it together. Go ahead, James. Would you please stand and join the music team? We're going to split the first verse into two parts because it repeats. Men will sing the first time through it, worthy is the Lamb. And then the second time we reach Worthy as the Lamb again, it'll be just the women. Yes. 
filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah. With all Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ, the risen King. We are forgiven, made whole, and new. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, not because we have to, but because we are grateful, let us return to God what is ours to share. Let us joyfully offer our time, our treasure, our commitment, and our prayers. Will the ushers please come forward as we enjoy the bell choir offertory.
Thank you, Bell Choir. Just beautiful, beautiful. Let us pray. Jesus, through this Lenten season, we have followed you, followed you to life, to love, to freedom, to suffering, to the cross, and now to resurrection. We thank you that you lead us, that you de desire us to follow you. With these gifts, we give back joyfully in that response of following you. We thank you for this resurrection day. Amen. It's now time for time for young disciples, and I hope for you to meet me all in the center aisle, okay? A little different location today. Happy 
Easter morning, everybody. Get all clipped up here. Look at all of you. Welcome. Welcome. Well, surprises. Who likes surprises? Are you all going to raise your hands? Only good surprises. Oh, oh, wait, man, wait a second. You said only good surprises? Can't some surprises be, eh? Yeah, okay. All right, let's talk through a few of those, okay? All right, this might be a good one. Okay. What about a surprise birthday party? That's a good one, okay. That's a very good surprise. It makes us feel happy to have family and friends and birthday cake all in the same place, right? That's a good surprise. Okay. Who might be surprised by a plate of your most favorite, yummy, still warm from the oven cookies waiting for you when you come home from school freshly baked by somebody you love? Is that not a wonderful surprise? That's a good one. Okay. Well, what about this one? What about at Christmas and you see a gift wrapped under the tree, all right? And it's got your name on it. And you think it's for sure, for sure, your favorite top asked for, waited for toy you've really, 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 really been wanting. And you open it, and it's a pair of pajamas. <laughs> eh, I'm not hearing so much good stuff. I'm hearing laughter out here. We may have played that trick or two time on our kids. But... Okay, all right. Well, here on the Easter morning, here we are, and in the next Bible reading, we'll follow some of Jesus' friends to the tomb on that very first Easter morning where Jesus' body was laid for three days after he had died on the cross. And there was a surprise there waiting for his friends, and this surprise gives each of us some different feelings, okay? So... The first clue of that surprise was that the stone was rolled away, and that was an amazing thing, as it was, to have the door open to the tomb. But first, we see that Mary Magdalene cried, and she was sad at this surprise. So this surprise was not a happy one for her. So much sadness on the day that Jesus died, and now his body is nowhere to be found. She thinks that his body was stolen. That made her very sad on the inside, okay? But then there's Simon Peter, and he was curious because the clothes and the claws that laid over Jesus, were, they, were cover, they, they were covering him. They were neatly folded and laying over on the side, all in order. And he found that to be very mysterious and very curious, and it made him wonder. So that was a wondering kind of surprise for him. But John saw it all and remembered what he had been taught. And this surprise allowed him to believe the resurrection story. Right then and there, he believed in that moment. That day for Jesus' friends and that day for us is like no other. God surprises us and we remember it today. So why don't we fold our hands and have a prayer. Be thankful for this, for this day. Dear God, we thank you for this resurrection story. Let it surprise our hearts and our minds today and forever. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. And Mrs. Trollinger and Maddie, I think you're going to take you to Children's Church.
And now we will read from the New Testament, the, epi the um, epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Let's bow our hearts in prayer together. Oh, gracious God, what is this wondrous news? Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave, but he is alive. He is risen from the dead, the first fruit of all the resurrection to come, even our own. Help us this day to live with resurrection hope, to know that no matter what is going on in the world around us, what's going on in the world inside us, that Christ is alive. He is risen just as he said. Help us to live with a resurrection faith. Help us to show the compassion of Christ to one another with the resurrection faith. We pray for many in our world in need. We pray for Benjamin who is sick and dehydrated. We pray God that the fluids he receives at the ER will be what he needs. We pray for Miles as he heals from an ear infection. Heal him. We pray for our dear Pat Girding, who was hospitalized this week in Florida with pneumonia, now home and recovering, but we pray that she will fully regain her strength. We give you thanks with the Kessler family for the advent, the birth of Samuel David. Thank you for this precious little boy. We look forward to seeing him. Thank you, God, for the season of sabbatical that is upon us all. May we each enter into the season to find rest and renewal and understand more what it is to follow Jesus, to follow Jesus in life, to follow Jesus to the cross, our own death, and to know that we follow Jesus by his promise to the resurrection. God, our world needs resurrection hope. Our world needs the good news that the kingdom of God is come, that the time is now at hand. We pray for our brothers and sisters, Christians in Sri Lanka, whose Christian churches were bombed today on Easter. Lord, it seems the world only knows hate and cynicism at times. And yet we know that those same movements can be within our own lives and hearts. Heal us all, Jesus. Comfort us in our losses. Give us hope of the resurrection to new life. This day and every day. And may we share the good news that Jesus Christ has made all things new. In Christ's name we pray, praying as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please stand for the reading from the Gospel of John? Stand as you are able. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At that, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them what, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. During the season of Lent and Palm Sunday and today, we've been talking about what it is to follow Jesus. What do followers, followers of Jesus hear and do? And often through this series, I've taken us out of John's gospel where, where we have done our, uh, the balance of our study. We've gone to Mark's gospel because in Mark's gospel, chapter 115, verse 15, is Jesus' first words of invitation. When he cries out, beginning his ministry with these words saying, the fullness of time has come now. The kingdom of God is here. It's in your midst. Repent and believe the good news. Good news? You mean there can be found in this world of bad news good news? Sometimes it can be so hard to see what's good around us, to hear what's truly good. Sometimes good news seems unbelievable, as in not possible to believe. Resurrection might fall into that category for you. Resurrection would definitely be good news, but it can be hard to believe. 
you may know the basic storyline of J.R.R. Tolkien's trilogy called The Lord of the Rings. It's a brilliant and powerful allegory of searching for good news in an increasingly dark and hopeless world, like John's Gospel. It's full of these contrasts between light and dark. In the third, the final book, entitled Return of the King, years have passed, and as many souls have given everything, even their lives, in hopes that the coming and suffocating darkness can, by some unbelievable miracle, be defeated. And in the last chapters of The Return of the King, two main characters are spent and broken, but nevertheless determined to finish their quest. The one that was entrusted to them to finally kill the Dark Lord named Sauron before his power devours every living thing into himself. Frodo Baggins and Samwise Gamgee are two ordinary humble hobbits upon whom the hopes of the whole world are pinned for humanity's deliverance. And at the last possible moment, just before all hope seems to be lost, Frodo and Sam actually succeed against all belief in their quest, but their lives in this moment will surely be forfeit. So they wait to die. But then, a miracle. Their lives are saved too as giant eagles swoop in to pluck them from certain doom. And as near to death as they are, they're scarcely aware of their rescue, but they are taken to safety where they recover in a sleep that lasts three days. A particular scene opens up the moment when Samwise is finally waking from his long sleep. His change of scenery from Mount Doom to a room of quiet paradise confuses Sam. He is stunned as well to see his friend there, Gandalf, the great white wizard. And he can't believe what, it's, what he's seeing. He can't believe what he's experiencing. It's one of those moments that it's hard just to get your mind around it. And so overwhelmed, Sam speaks his first words and he says, Gandalf, I thought you were dead. I thought I was dead. Is everything sad going to come untrue? What's happened to the world? Indeed, what's happened to the world today? Suddenly, the dark, hopeless world is changing in a moment of time unlike any other time. The world may be dark, and it may seem impossible to you or to anyone that there could be any good news. But into the dark, the light comes. Before, all any human heart could expect was to live, to struggle, and to die. That's it, the end. Try as we may, wish as hard as we want, the one thing that crushes us in the end is death. We cannot escape it. Indeed, all of our lives we experience that it is extending its corrupting tendrils into our living. We get sick. We get hurt. We have accidents. We die. But resurrection, and into the dark comes the light. Dare, dare we think that this news is true? Dare we hope? Dare we believe? Resurrection says yes. Dare to believe that Jesus is alive.
Dare to hope that Jesus rose from the grave just as he promised. Dare to think that piercing through the bad news, there is good news to believe. Dare to know that because Jesus lives again, death, our final enemy, is defeated. It's a resurrection dare. Will you believe it? Will you follow Jesus now to resurrection? So what can we know this good news means for us? Christ is alive. What does that mean? Well, we can now really hear and respond to Jesus' call in Mark's gospel. We can repent and believe at last that there is good news. Good news in a world of bad news. We can do so because we know the good news. We were in darkness, but Jesus has come. We can repent of our unbelief every day that resurrection is just not possible. You know, just because you've not seen a miracle does not mean that you can in any way logically conclude that there can be no miracle like Christ's resurrection. You see, Jesus himself was plunged into the darkness of a tomb, the place for the dead. But resurrection and Jesus, the light of humanity, he comes. And we can have our minds changed. We can repent. We can have a 180 degree change of our expectations, our thoughts, when confronted with what seems impossible. But we know it's now not impossible because there he is, alive from the grave. He comes to us with the good news because he comes to us himself the best news of all. We can repent of all of our stuck ways of thinking and looking at ourselves and the world, believing there's really nothing to be done against the ultimate end of death. Jesus, the resurrected one, comes to draw us out of our darkened ways of believing and living and thinking that the bad news has conditioned in us. And like Samwise Gamgee, we can marvel. Truly, everything sad is going to come untrue. So what will you do? What will you do with the fullness of time that has come? What, what will you do with the kingdom of God that is in your midst? What will you do with the good news? Jesus is alive from the dead. Will you choose to follow Jesus, the living one, to resurrection? Jeremy McKean has a, a blog called Truth Point Church. He tells the story of a young Muslim man. While he was in college, this young man made a life-changing decision. He turned 180 degrees and left his Muslim faith to become a follower of Jesus. A friend of his was shocked when he heard about the change and he asked him, why did you become a follower of Jesus? He responded this way. It's really very simple. Imagine that you are walking down a road and you come to a fork in the road and there are two people there to follow as your guide along the way. One of them is dead and one of them is alive. Which one would you choose to follow? Today, Jesus is alive from the grave. As Mary 
Peter, John, and the disciples discovered in the days after the resurrection, this, the world was still grinding on as it does with bad news. No expectation of anything beyond the normal. Nothing supernatural, nothing like a resurrection. You see, Pilate was still governor. The Romans still ruled with their ruthless, oppressive boot. The murderous religious leaders were still in charge, including one named Paul, but that's another story to come. Life for them, like for us, was still full of challenges, sickness, heartache, even death. But even as the grind of Monday comes after first Easter Sunday, we can know this. Jesus is still alive. And for you today, for us, the question, will you follow Jesus? Amen. I invite us all to stand, join with the music team as they lead us in our Easter song of dedication. And informs me that over the years I have turned this song into a country song. <laughs> so we're gonna get a little schmaltzy on this one.
benediction, uh, Diane is going to play a brief postlude, and then uh, we will uh, begin together the sending ceremony for sabbatical. If uh, you are not available to stay or just not interested in staying, that's fine. You can uh, take your leave um, right after the benediction during the postlude, and the rest of us uh, will remain and be here just briefly after the postlude is done. And now unto our God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond our wildest imaginings. To him be the glory, through us his church, and through Jesus Christ his Savior, Savior our Lord. Amen. Go in peace and be seated. Amen.